Hello everybody, my name is Khaled Sariki and this is the part 2 of the ASUS RT AX82U Routers Advanced Settings. We are still concentrating on the wireless. So let's start. As you can see, the wireless section has a lot of settings. You have all of these to, to set up and then you have all of these tabs. Each one is a world of its own. That's why I have to make a separate video for each section. Otherwise, it's going to be one video nearly three or four hours long. Okay, so let's go one by one. Enable Smart Connect. You could turn it on or off. Um, this, it, it, let me explain what this is. Some devices cannot go to 2.4 gigahertz. Some devices cannot go to 2.5 gigahertz and can only go to 2.4. So the older devices cannot go to 5 gigahertz, can only go to 2.4 gigahertz. This, if you turn this on, the router will make decisions for you which device to, uh, to connect to which network. Now, this is also basically... Um, Letting the router control the decision is not good because some devices may act up weird and not go on the 5 gigahertz when in reality it should be forced to the 5 gigahertz and it's ready to go. And you are simply believing what the router is telling you and you're simply using a lower speed. So i rather decide myself, uh, leave this off and decide myself which device should use 2.4, which should use 5 gigahertz frequency. Okay, this is the band. You have to choose the band first in order to change the settings underneath. So if I'm set changing the settings are of 2.4 gigahertz, I choose this, and these are all my settings for 2.4. And if I want to change the setting for 5 gigahertz, I choose that one, and these are all my settings for the 5 gigahertz. So let's go to the 2.4 gigahertz first. On the 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, this is height SSID. This is the actual SSID. This is the name that's being transmitted to the air for the wireless devices to connect to. Now, do we want to keep the old name that was there when our older router or do we want a brand new name? The answer is the old name. You must keep the old name that existed for years in your house because all your smart devices are connecting to it uh, using that old name and the old password. If you change the name or the password, you have to connect everything all over again. Now we have homes that are smart homes with smart switches, smart speakers, smart refrigerator, smart washing machine, smart microwave. You could have a house with nearly 50 smart devices. If you change this name, what happens? is that all those smart devices need to be reprogrammed and you have to find the manu owner, owner manuals for each one of those puppies because it is not easy to remember um, uh, how to set up each one of those devices. So no change. Leave the name the same name as you had in your old router, especially on the 2.4 gigahertz part because the 2.4 gigahertz is the one that reaches furthest away in your house not the 5 gigahertz. So usually all the smart switches and all the smart devices connect to the 2.4 gigahertz network because it reaches longer distance but it has slower speeds. Hide SSID. What is hide SSID? The hide SSID should be no. It, you shouldn't choose yes. Why? Because if you hide the SSID, uh, you cannot see the name of your own network. And if you have... Uh, and a guest or someone who comes and they want to connect to your network, to your main network, uh, they don't see your SSID. So leave it, let the radio transmit the SSID um, and uh, let it uh, be known to everyone in the network. So that's what it is. Uh, wireless mode. This is very important. The wireless mode can be auto, can be N only, or legacy. 
Obviously, you want it to be auto because you want your legacy devices and your newer devices to be able to use the internet. If you check this box, it will be optimized for Xbox. BG as uh, protection means uh, it will allow the BG uh, devices to connect. So check this box. What is B in G? These are very old wireless protocols such as 802.11B, 802.11G, which came in the late 90s and early 2000s. It's a 20 year old technology. Actually, it was, it, it, it was, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure when it came. I think it was two, 2005 when the G came. But yeah, so that's besides the point. So this is very important. 802.11ax and Wi-Fi in Wi-Fi 6 mode must be disabled if you have legacy devices. If you want good compatibility, you should disable this. If you enable this, only those devices that are able to use this protocol will be able to connect to your device. This is why a lot of people are complaining that I bought a brand new router and the speed is supposed to be this and that and it's not going that uh, reaching that speed. And the reason is this because if you enable this, uh, you may get faster speeds, but then your older devices cannot connect to your router. So you have to pick, you know, the lesser of the two evils, wh whether you want to run everything at the slower, relatively slower, so to speak, or you want to run fewer, newer devices at the maximum speed. So this is good to be disabled unless you don't have any legacy devices at your house. Okay, Wi-Fi uh, wi Agile Multiband. This is for uh, like a, if you if you have multiple access points, if you have a huge house or a dormitory, hotel, or a business with multiple access point, then the Wi-Fi Agile uh, Multiband will allow. If if this is enabled, it will allow smooth transition from one access point to another access point without losing internet connectivity during that transition. So I will repeat that. This will allow, if you enable this, it will allow smooth transition as you're walking room to room, corridor by or to corridor in order to continuously have internet connection in a big hotel room or somewhere, big house or something like that. And where is the place is equipped with multiple access points. So this comes in handy. Remember, an access point is not necessarily an access point. A router could be used as an access point too. So keep that in mind. <coughs> a lot of people would probably say, well, I don't have access points. I only have two routers. Well, you could have one router as a regular uh, main router and the other one as an access point. Okay. Okay. Target wake time. You can enable or disable, that's for LAN, waking on LAN. Channel bandwidth, it's, uh, you know, it's good to have 20 and 40 instead of just uh, 20. Okay, control channel, it's good to be auto, but you could always switch it, you know. Current channel is channel one, you know, it could jump into different channels. Why is this good to be auto? The reason this is good to be auto is because if you have too much radio noise, in one of the other channels, the router will automatically jump to the different channel. As the router jump to the second channel or some other channel, then the wireless card in your computer will also jump to the channel. So basically they are actually talking with each other and communicating through the channel. Before the router jumps to a different channel, it transmits signals to all the wireless devices to let it know what channel it is going to so they can adjust accordingly. And uh, this is the extension channel. Uh, for it's, it's good to be auto. Actually, you don't have a choice. You can't change that to auto, so to anything else once the control channel is auto. But if you change the control channel to a different number, only then you can have the extension channel to a different number. But when this is auto, then you don't have the option to change it. Uh, okay, the authentication method, this is the password. What type of password you want? So WPA2, there are so many different authentication methods. Remember, don't, don't play around with this because some legacy devices do not support very, very secure authentication methods. 
So WPA2 personal authentication method is something that is supported with most wireless devices. But if you fool around with this and go to more, more, more secure like enterprise level, then your legacy devices will have no internet connection. So don't mess around with this puppy. Um, okay. WPA encryption. The, uh, okay, so the, the encryption is uh, basically encrypting the wireless signals so a hacker or a third person cannot uh, uh, access it or decode it or steal your information or personal information. So that's why the encryption should always be, um, uh, you know, enabled. And this is AES. That's the encryption method that this one is currently have. WPA uh, uh, pre shared key. Uh, this is basically your wireless password, which is you know grayed out. Uh, protected management frames, uh, which is uh, currently disabled, but you can uh, you can capable it or you could require it. So this is also something that you have to be careful with. Because if you make it capable, devices that are not capable will have a hard time connecting. And if you make it required, the devices that are not capable of with protected management frames will absolutely have no choice. Now we will talk about group key rotational interval. The 3600 that you see, that is the number of seconds. So 3600 seconds means one hour. The security key will change every hour. But you can change that to 2.5 million seconds. 2.5 million seconds is 28 days and 22 hours. So that's how long it can change the security key if you want it to. Now, if you change the security more rapidly, the processor uh, of the router will be basically be suffering from overwork. It will generate heat and it will be under more stress than normal. So leave it at, by, at the default, which is 3600, and don't change it to lower numbers, because that means it will have to change rapidly. Uh, so basically, uh, that's all the settings for 2.4 gigahertz. Now, if you go to 5 gigahertz, then the settings are slightly different, not quite, but slightly different. This is your 5 gigahertz network name. And same thing, SSID, hide or let it be visible. Wireless mode auto, you could optimize for Xbox. You could have AX only, AC, X mixed, legacy, but auto is the best for compatibility issues. This again, leave it disabled for compatibility issues with legacy devices. I mentioned this with the 2.4, same thing. Um, again, same thing as 2.4, access point, being able to continually walk in the corridors of a big hotel and being able to continuously receive internet access. If you have a single modem, you don't want to enable this. Uh, target wake time, enable and disable. Channel bandwidth, uh, this is currently chosen. So everything, all the bandwidths are available. You could limit it to certain bandwidth, but why not? Why not choose the entire spectrum? So that's much better to leave it at all. Um, the control channel is automatic, but you could change that to whichever channel you want. It's good to leave it automatic because you don't know which channel has the clearest uh, radio signal. So that's why I leave it automatic because you, you have to uh, let the router decide the best communication channel. Extension channel, same thing. It's auto. Only if you change this, you can change that. Authentication method is the same thing. Leave it at WPA2 if you have legacy devices and more secure if you have newer devices. This is the most secure encryption. Leave that. Um, shared key. This is the key. And everything else is basically the same. And so this is the wireless general. I'm going to make another video on every single tab, okay? Because there is a lot, and I don't want each video to become so boring that you will simply turn it off and change the channel, watch another YouTube channel. I'm not going to do that, all right? So I hope this was educational, uh, you know.
like and subscribe if you want to see the follow-up uh, more advanced settings of this amazing advanced wireless router.